Namaskar. Hello and welcome to Key Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have with me Dr. Ankit Shah. And before I introduce you to him in a proper way, let's first welcome our guest of the evening, Dr. Ankit Shah. Namaskar and welcome to Key Guru's channel. Namaskaram, sir. Namaskaram. So, um, viewers, Dr. Ankit Shah has a very impressive credentials. He is a fellow chartered accountant and a qualified company secretary and a keen observer of foreign policy and security for the Indian subcontinent. His predictions include many major geopolitical events like Doklam, 370, 375 removal, LAC standoff. I can go on, but he is primarily a geoeconomics observer and I have had the pleasure of talking to him and listening to him in many uh, forums and I thought it was only appropriate that you, the viewer, get to listen to him on some of his ideas. Today's is a very important topic, which is de-dollarization. Some of us may not be convinced that the dollar is weakening, but the facts that Dr. Shah is going to put out today, I will let you make up your mind what you think is happening. Dr. Shah, I yield the, yield the floor over to you. Take it away, sir. All right. So we'll begin with a little bit of a history. Uh, yes. So when, you know, Britain used to have this uh, privilege of having colonies the world over, which is why uh, pound was able to be the reserve currency of the world. Uh, now, in order to flip a reserve currency, the formula is very simple. It is accumulation of physical gold and silver precious metals. And then you impose your currency as the new reserve currency of the world. So United States, uh, very, uh, you know, in a calculated manner, uh, in the Second World War, supplied all the war material to the European Union countries. Uh, and in exchange of that, it collected physical gold. Once entire physical uh, gold was accumulated in the Bretton Woods Agreement, United States imposed dollar as a new reserve currency replacing the pound. After that, what we saw was a cold war between the USSR and the US, wherein the trust on the United States dollar started going down. Um, one of the reasons why trust existed on the US dollar was it was still hooked to the gold standard, right? So what happened was United States added this particular line on the currency, which is called in God we trust. So there were two aims of it. One was to bring back the trust on the dollar. And second was to attack the communist theory uh, that religion is an opium, right? So in God we trust was a counter to the USSR in that sense. Now, after the Vietnam War, which was stretching like anything, uh, the major countries of the world started losing faith in the US dollar, which is why they said, you know, uh, we want to submit our US dollar reserves back and we want physical gold from the United States. The economy was already in doldrums and President Nixon decided on 15th August 1971 to remove the gold convertibility and the gold standard from the US dollar. Now, this gave birth to the fiat currency. So all the currencies of the world right now that we have are fiat currencies absolutely backed by nothing printed out of thin air now why this particular date was selected 15th august 1971 uh, my reading is that you know few weeks before august uh, prime minister indira gandhi was declared as one of the most popular leader in the world by a gallup poll and this did not go down well with nixon and kissinger and we have from the declassified information already the kind of words uh, they used for the Indian Prime Minister and the Indian administration. So this particular date was selected for it. Now, full-fledged dollarization of the world started. The very first was 1973. Henry Kissinger went to Saudi Arabia. In the Oil for Security program, it was decided the all the OPEC countries are going to sell the crude oil in US dollars only in exchange of the security which United States provides. This gave birth to what we call the concept of petrodollar. Now, uh, because this entire uh, 180 plus nations started parking their savings uh, in the United States dollar and the United States treasury, you know, all the assets in the West, especially in the US, started going inflated. 
which is why by the mid 90s you saw that the dot com bubble started being created now obviously there was an attraction to the new found technology at that point in time but besides that this entire reserve currency bubble went to the dot com specifically in the stocks uh, united states again uh, you know we have seen the kind of de dollarization attempts we first saw uh, uh, saddam hussein tried it alone uh, we saw gaddafi of libya tried it alone and we know what the outcome was um but the first serious de-dollarization was by eu allies when they launched the euro currency so if germany wants to trade with france they said we are going to do in euro so this entire european union came up with this currency challenging the reserve currency status of the dollar this was the first ever de-dollarization attempt in the world now what happened united states in order to take revenge dragged through nato uh, a conflict in yugoslavia with which the euro currency lost valuation after that in order to support uh, the, the the dot com bubble that was going on uh, united states uh, came up with an act which is called graham bliley act this graham bliley act replaced the steagles act what was the role of the steagles act steagles act mandated that investment banking should be separated from commercial banking it was lifted by bill clinton in 1998 glass steagall act yes 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 so now what happened um, th- these banks which can now do both the stuff and spe- and and do the speculative trade with your money uh, the amount that you deposit in your account uh, get sweeped into another account of the bank and they can play speculative trade with that so this is how the reserve currency bubble was mixed with the public deposits now what happened uh, the the, the dot com bubble peaked its valuation and european union said we are going to no more park our savings in the us treasury now taking revenge of that united states brought china in the world trade organization and you know all the benefits of the world trade organization membership with which we see that how china was the chinese communist party was enabled to become the export and the manufacturing giant that it has become today so in, instead of eu it was the chinese communist party which uh, gave this offer that we are going to park our savings in the us treasury so this was the deal but since this was the first ever de-dollarization attempt you saw the effect Uh, the dot com burst happened and about 78% valuations of the it sector went down by october 2002 because the it sector was born out of this uh, the plowing back of the petro dollar and the fiat currency similarly the services sector was also born out of the fiat reserve currency now as we see uh, after the 2008 crisis and we know that the west has only so- one solution to all the economic problems that is printing more currency so to take out the americans from the 2008 crisis uh, the printing machine started uh, this time as the inflation passed on to the rest of the world um, we saw arab spring in 2011 in the gulf where a lot many of the middle east governments started collapsing so this was the point in time the gulf realized that in order to keep the reserve currency status of the dollar Uh, this is the kind of heavy price that they paid not just that about 50% of the entire crude oil wealth went wasted in the radicalization efforts in the indian subcontinent and the middle east just for the sake of keeping the dollar going so this was the um, the moment of realization the arab spring was a moment of realization for the gulf two or three things i i would like to ask you uh, because uh, there's so much information that you have provided in fact i'm trying to keep them in my mind so i don't forget uh, the, the number one thing that you mentioned about investment banking is bang on um, the uh, repealing of the glass steagall act had uh, very bad consequences now um, the question that i have for you uh, dr ankit is that even today people say that of the amount of dollars printed in us 65% is being used outside of us in other words the dollar is the one currency that many countries will agree with instead for instance if you go if you tour some place like mozambique 
chances are that you will be able to sell or buy things using dollars just making mota mota statement so that grip is still there isn't it this is my first question and as you answer it i'll give you other questions yeah so uh, we need to understand one of the confusions among many experts that i have seen is they believe that no other currency can replace dollar because countries of the world trust the united states dollar now we need to clarify that none of the countries of the world trust the us dollar the trust is actually only on the endless printing capacity of the dollar not on the dollar not on the us military not on the us government not on the us economy or the dollar the trust is only about the endless printing capacity say tomorrow if i am depositing my uh, savings in the us dollar i i am sure that at least the federal reserve is going to print and do the repayment that i need so which is why you see any point in crisis uh, all the savings will move towards the us dollar so uh, the trust factor is not about the currency it is about the endless printing capacity uh, which is because of the reserve currency status that it has well when somebody tried to question that person lost his job nikolai sarkozy yep so you know as, as as i said the european union their own allies were the first one to challenge the us dollar but the problem with the european union uh, effort was uh, they, they they successfully snatched about 20% of the reserve currency status of the dollar but the problem with them was uh, they were playing de dollarization with fiat currency european union did not collect physical gold to flip the us dollar this was a fundamental flaw with the de dollarization that the european union did which is which is now being solved by uh, asia and gulf at this point in time so you know by 2015 we saw indian prime minister coming up with a gold monetization scheme wherein he is trying to channelize the domestic gold to the coffers um, but as we all know that the civilizational wisdom people won't part with their physical gold because gold is what we call as sanatan the, the real purchasing power of the currency so I mean, you, you can't that, reach the wisdom of our, our mothers and sisters and daughters that, that's a given um sorry i finish your thought i have another i thought you were done go ahead yeah so you know uh, after that gold monetization scheme uh, the prime minister took the lead uh, and india said that we are no more going to do any kind of multilateral trade pacts because the ultimate aim was once we line up each country with a bilateral free trade agreement it is very easy to flip out the dollar negotiating with individual nations because a multilateral setup would involve 10 15 20 nations uh, wherein dollar goes by default as a currency for the international trade so india took the lead i believe russia and china had absolutely no clue what is going on so uh, in uh, uh, all the countries who were intent on de dollarization including the gulf they all started collecting physical gold from uh, increasingly from 2015 and since you know united states was making a single country reserve currency it required that massive quantity of gold right now it has about 8000 tons but asia and gulf are not making a single country reserve currency they are making a, a bricks format wherein each participant nations currency would be in the basket and this will be pegged to commodities so uh, this august you are going to have africa summit of bricks where they are going to work on this particular formula after which you can expect the pilot transactions to begin now there are people who tell me that um de dollarization will take years decades now i have to tell them that one part of de dollarization has already happened which is from january 2002 none of the allies are also parking their savings in the us treasury which is why you see entire inflation has to be faced by the western countries themselves till now they were passing on the american lifestyle bills to other countries uh, but now if they print the dollars they have to face the inflation back home only so one portion of de dollarization has already happened second question which i get is um what if the brics currency does not work or fail so the countries of the world 
would in the process to move towards the BRICS format have or would have already started shifting their bilateral trade into bilateral currencies. So none of them are going to come back to the dollar anyways, even if the BRICS currency fails. So de-dollarization is 100% confirmed in that sense. Now, um, the, my second question to you was that it is believed that the second war that the uh, U.S. conducted against Saddam Hussein, especially the Gulf, second Gulf War, was because Saddam Hussein said that he will no longer accept dollars, but instead he will accept euros. Just let us take it for yeah. at face value. And then, of course, he was unseated. What was the reason for uh, Gaddafi to be unseated? Because he had actually admitted to Lockerbie disaster. Mm -hmm. So Gaddafi was uh, take, uh, trying to build an African union uh, with gold as a primary backing of the currency. So uh, understand that the reserve currency always actually flips with gold accumulation. The European Union de-dollarization was... You know, if, if, if for the words, I would use cosmetic de-dollarization. But the one that happens with actual accumulation of physical gold, that is the one trading in gold, uh, using gold in the reserves. Uh, that is the real de-dollarization. I mean, that's the only way how you can flip the reserve currency, which is why Libya was uh, attacked. Because he was trying to build an African Union. Uh, viewers... Uh, Look, we are trying to build uh, alternative constructs and alternative viewpoints on what is a very contentious topic. I see some really nasty comments being done on the uh, comment section. All I would urge viewers to do is you should keep an open mind. I have brought Dr. Chityala on our channel and he has said that, listen, the dollar is going to be around for a long, long, long time. That is one point of view. I'm hearing here through Dr. Ankit Shah, a counterpoint. It's up to you to decide which you think is going to prevail. But that doesn't mean that without hearing the expert, you start passing comments. I just wanted to tell our viewers that please keep an open mind and all questions you can ask. I think it's ask Ankit is the hashtag. I missed it when it was scrolling. But uh, do also like this video. We want this to be heard by a lot of people. It's not just India alone. This is the whole world that is looking at this. A lot of things that so far that Dr. Ankit has said is bang on. I mean, not all of us consume news in the way we would like to. We are all deal dealing with local politics, local news more than global. And his ge geoeconomics so far observations have been bang on. So I just don't see... Uh, Dr. Shah, people do give adverse comments on our show. I just feel like this is too loaded. That's why I have to come in and say this. Now, the next question I have for you, sir, is that uh, China started this. They said that, you know, people are not accepting our renminbi. And, and the primary cause for that is renminbi is not taken seriously. I mean, the Chinese central bank has been caught printing the same serial number five, six times. Okay, so how can you take that note seriously? So they came up with this digital RMB, backed it with gold and so on and so forth. How much of attraction has that had thus far? So digital yuan has been a failure. Uh, compared to that, rupee and the UPA cards have had the first more advantage with uh, 30 plus nations officially accepting is as a kind of uh, the payment system. Now, uh, just for the viewers to know, uh, the the, the, the uh, some of the pointers which I have observed why I believe that de-dollarization is going to be faster is because I believe that this particular Ukraine conflict is actually a de-dollarization script. I believe, I mean, if you just look at the steps, as soon as, you know, um, Afghanistan exit happened, now nobody would dispute that it was US decision to exit from Afghanistan. As soon as the exit happened, the... Uh, in, in the immediate weeks, what exactly happened? Saudi Arabia signed a defense cooperation with Russia. So principally speaking, this was a reversal of the oil for security program. It already happened. Now, just look at the actions of the uh, United States. Uh, it forced European Union to ban the import of Russian gold. Now, this is exactly what is needed for de-dollarization that gold is accumulated by Asia. All right. Immediately after, in July 2022, United States, after making EU ban import of Russian gold, 
United States pass on gold to uh, Swiss refineries and the Swiss refineries pass that gold to China. It's an open fact. All right. This is exactly what is needed for de-dollarization. Um, look at look at the gift city, uh, the project that is going on right now. You have uh, many uh, US companies coming and sitting over here in the gift city. I believe this is going to be the mini World Bank, uh, which uh, for de-dollarization that is being created. Because as you rightly pointed out, the transparency factor of the Chinese Communist Party is in question. And uh, besides that, when Xi Jinping went to the Arab summit in Riyadh, he went for three days and he was trying to find out uh, uh, because de-dollarization means um, that all the Costco and Walmart wrecks will be totally empty. Uh, the exports are not going to happen from China to the US. So uh, he was trying to find out uh, how much interest does uh, the Gulf show if I'm decoupling with the West and, and to his shock, uh, he got only a commitment of 30 billion dollars so chinese also have now realized that in order for de-dollarization to be successful they will have to keep india in between because none of those countries are going to you know do directly the trade with Vladimir putin or xi jinping which is why i believe that the gift city in gujarat of india will become i mean the new development bank regional office which has started will become the mini world bank for and, and the kind of investments which are declared 2.4 lakh crore uh, increasing the size to three times the bullion and stock exchange trade has already started uh, uh, sj shankar brought about 50 nations to gujarat so all these movements you can see about 30 40 nations i believe are clearly intent on de-dollarization because the gulf has realized for in exchange of the real crude oil what it is accumulating is a fiat dollar and and, and, the, and that fiat dollar is losing purchasing power day by day i mean if you start from 1913 federal reserve to this point about 99 percent of the purchasing power has gone so who would like to save and collect a fiat dollar uh, as in reserves with you know in exchange of real crude oil so gulf has also realized that they need to move out of dollar which is why you see that all of them are aligned and they are looking at um, the kind of uh, de-radicalization process, uh, which is why they saw that, you know, they are going to bring in the yoga, Ayurveda and the mandirs in the Gulf region to de-radicalize because they have seen the American method of de-radicalization, uh, the bombers flying from the top. They have seen the Russian military method and they've also seen the Chinese method of stealing organs from the Uyghur Muslims bodies. So I think they uh, they selected India for the de-radicalization of the Gulf region. Uh, now, this is exactly what I believe uh, the de-dollarization Y is equal to de-radicalization is also going to be equal to de-missionarization because a lot of missionaries funding coming from this endless printing of dollar and euro from the West is going to stop. And this de-dollarization will also be equal to de-communism because once the currency is pegged with a finite commodity like gold, silver, oil, gas, wheat, rice, uh, the leaders won't be able to declare freebies, socialist freebies like they used to before. Uh, a lot of fiscal discipline will have to be maintained, which is why I say de-dollarization is also equal to de-communism. Um, given this stand, you know, some people say that the withdrawal of the United States abruptly, some might add, from Afghanistan was a statement to the world that the United States is done policing the seas, that it doesn't want to stay and be the cop wherever there has been any skirmish, you know, the naval might of the United States has been uh, there to do it. Now, let us say that, that is, there is some element of truth in it. China is really, really growing its Navy fast. And other than Japan, I don't see anybody else coming into that higher levels, three countries, United States, China, and Japan. And, and where does India stand and how important is it for India to build up its naval strength? So, uh, which is why, you know, I believe that uh, Adani was specifically targeted because he was doing those port projects because it's all about the security of the trade lanes. 
And we all know that the Indian Ocean is the pivot of the global economics. About 90% of the raw materials and resources, oil, gas, natural resources pass through that. So which is why you believe that there, there is an alliance which is uh, going up uh, with the Gulf wherein you know uh, both saudi arabia and uae and india together from the last bunch of the fiat dollars that we have we are trying to buy uh, the western companies uh, collaborate with them uh, sports clubs etc because they also gulf has to diversify its economy otherwise it happens like uh, the neighbor that we have back pakistan in terms of economics so i believe that an alliance is what we are looking at where you know uae air force uh, could be eventually you know subsumed with interoperability with the indian air force the saudi arabian land forces can be interoperable with the indian combat forces and the iranian navy could be interoperable with the uh, indian navy which is which makes sense because uae has rafales and uh, mirage which is what Indian uh, Air Force also has. Um, I also see that uh, because of the Chabar port project, uh, there is a good chance of interoperability with the Iranian Navy as well. So in the long term, what I'm seeing is that a lot of US defense and tech companies would, uh, by 2030, they would all settle into India. Uh, I mean, if you just if you just look at uh, the even even the photos of the Google and Microsoft heads, who came to meet the prime minister um, they were told to bring the india head along in the meeting um, not just that both of them went back home laid off employees and also vacated the offices so i believe that once this de-dollarization happens i have already predicted about 15 to 35 percent us stocks route uh, bonds derivatives all of them by december 2023 all these companies are going to become the tiny real valuation that it is once the reserve currency bubble is out of those valuations and then these companies are going to shift and settle in india this is this is what i look at in the long term by 2030 now um, given all these things i mean i i i might not 100% agree with your observations but i i see a lot of truth in what you just said what how do you see the Qatar incident where India said profuse apologies in this whole camera? So Qatar is one last, uh, I would say, last wall in the Gulf region in terms of de-radicalization, which is why India is looking for LNG deals. We are looking at about 26% stake with the United States uh, uh, companies. Uh, wherein if we get that stake, we would be no longer dependent on Qatar supplies for the gas. Uh, if that fructifies, I think uh, a lot of actions vis-a-vis uh, -vis Qatar can be freely be taken because once the dependency is gone. So uh, Qatar uh, certainly, you know, as soon as it took the stake in Credit Suisse on 23rd Jan, I had already predicted that something is going to happen with the Adani FPO because Qatar has always been how hard taken anti-India stand. So as soon as they took a stake in Credit Suisse and, and you saw what Credit Suisse did. It gave a good rating to the Adani bond and immediately after the FPO, it gave a zero bond rating to Adani. So that is how they uh, played with the sentiments of the public over here in the Indian uh, stock market. So I believe that Qatar is being used as a tool um, because there are two factions, I believe, in the U.S. Uh, companies. Uh, one faction is completely aligned to de-dollarization. I believe that percentage is around 93%. 7% uh, of the deep state companies still want to continue with the dollar. Uh, they are not aligned just, I believe, with respect to the timing perspective. It's not about whether or not to kill the fiat dollar it's only about the timing perspective and if you look at the moves that the united states is making um, the pentagon has asked for a budget for taking over canadian mines anybody can tell you that uh, if a commodity is with which the currency is going to be pegged you need those mines right similarly united states have given an all stock takeover bid to australia's biggest gold uh, mining company so you're already seeing moves where United States is uh, moving towards, you know, after all the drama closes, it's going to repack its currency and it has 8,000 tons of gold. So I don't think it will be a big deal, but a lot many of your 
socialist freebies uh, will be decimated. I have predicted about 60% cut in the US salary levels because once you have uh, start doing the manufacturing home, not just that you are going to pollute your own country now, uh, but besides that, if that product is going to stand with an Asian product in terms of competition, what is going to happen is you have to cut the salaries of Americans by 60%. So by 2025, I am expecting a 60% cut to the economy, 25% cut in the defense budget, 35% cut in the socialist freebies. Uh, this is what I am expecting to happen with the U.S. economy. Um, Dr. Shah, uh, what you predicted may have already happened in some big high-tech companies. Uh, five, six-year experienced developers were uh, making around 350 to 500K a year. And when this, this layoffs happened recently, Everybody's uh, um, in, uh, annual incomes have been uh, resized uh, drastically down, and many were told, "If you don't like this salary, you know you are welcome to leave." So there has been some adjustment. Uh, people are not talking much about it, but I've heard here and there news that uh, from 500k it's come down to more realistic 200k. Even 200k is a lot, but be that as it may, I mean, see, some of them can do two to three people's work, and, and Silicon Valley is an expensive place. So I can understand that. So I think we have had a, a lot of questions to go through. And, and somebody has asked me, you know, why can't I shut down some, you know, nasty comment? You know, look, this is a democracy. You you are an intelligent viewer. If you are reading the comments while listening to Dr. Shah, you, you have yourself the capability, whether you want to agree with somebody's view or not agree with you. Stifling something, stifling comment, unless they are abusive, we don't believe in that. Okay. This is a free flow of ideas, guys. Just think of it that way and let's move on. Let's take some questions for Dr. Shah, please. J.S. Kumar wants to know how the rupee will behave in future when de-dollarization completes. Okay. So I'll give you a little bit of history. What exactly happened with the fiat reserve currency that started from 1971? A, a lot of manufacturing, farming, precious metals, food processing, logistics, and defense. All these sectors in Asia and Gulf were artificially suppressed in terms of valuations. They were not allowed to come to its real value. Now, how, how that used to happen? I think that happened also in the West, wherein uh, they run this individualism wave, where you know uh, people started asking rights from their brothers, fathers, uh, parents, right? And once they started asking rights, the entire family corpus got broken into small chunks. Uh, which killed the enterprising sector completely, including farming and manufacturing. So I believe that once de-dollarization happens, <coughs> once it happens, uh, you will see all these sectors will boom like anything. Manufacturing, farming, precious metals, gold and silver, logistics, food processing, and defense. And, and you already see that as soon as the United States withdraws from the global policing, each of these countries will have to work out their own security. So obviously the defense sector is going to come up. So, and this, this is not just uh, what uh, the West did with, in terms of individualism wave in Asia and Gulf, even in rural America, this individualism wave is what finished off the family as an institution in the United States, which is exactly why you see, uh, you know, until the, uh, the kid comes to its graduation, the parents have rotated two, three times, which is why even the education does not get complete. So in just in order to save the fiat reserve currency status, the United States finished off the family as an institution, which is why I say that the NRIs are going to be attacked very soon, because uh, once it becomes a high interest regime, in a high interest regime, only NRIs are going to get loans. Because you have the education backing, you have the family stability backing, uh, you have the career backing, um, which is why you, you the NRI guys are going to get loans, uh, and this will be not this will not go down well with the Americans, which is which is when I believe the attacks will start. Organized crimes. Well, um, NRI is what you're suggesting <laughs> will be the new age Jews, but. Uh, uh, we'll, 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 we'll see how that goes. I hope it won't come to that. Jayanti Iyer wants to know, why is the cabal interested in de-dollarization? Mm. So one is the mountain of debt that is created. United States never intended that this debt is going to be paid. 
Now, if you look at the history of all the global powers, uh, previous global powers, the Dutch, the Portuguese, uh, the Spanish, the British, all of them were dumped by these companies exactly at the point in time when the interest expense crossed the defense spending. So United States has right now reached that stage uh, wherein I don't believe that these companies will give any privilege to the United States to stay and continue in the economy. I believe all these are going to shift and settle in India later. So why the cabal is interested in de-dollarization? One is to solve the economic crisis which uh, the West is moving towards. Uh, the, uh, all of these socialist freebies and the mountain of debt and, and printing as a solution can no more move forward. Um, whenever a currency reset happens, you see, just see the statement of Hillary Clinton. She's saying for climate change purpose, uh, we need to remove physical cash. So she's preparing uh, the narrative for taking the economy towards a fully controlled communist digital dollar. I call the digital dollar as a communist money because once they have control over all the electronic entries of the money that's that you have, uh, they are going to trace everything, everything. So uh, one thing that we already know that you are not going to get interest on this digital dollar. But what if tomorrow they apply negative interest rates, which means you got $20,000 salary deposited and they flip it into 18,000 negative interest rate. Uh, I, I think until and unless they take everything in control, the reset won't be possible, which is why they are coming with a digital dollar. By the way, don't think that day is too far away. Japan already has negative interest rates. Your savings are actually, Japan is telling its citizens don't save so much. So this is not something that he's saying is, is far-fetched. It is near-fetched. Uh, next question. Rishikesh Khedkar, when can I see one rupee equal to one US dollar? Well, I have predicted by 2029, one rupee equal to, uh, one dollar equal to three INR, three rupees by 2029. That's what my prediction is, which is exactly why Adani was targeted specially because uh, out of 30 billion loans, he had taken 21 billion loans, foreign loans, uh, and the repayments were supposed to start after 2025 for the majority of the foreign loans. So, you know, once the valuations of the fiat currencies of the West goes down, it is very easy to repay back in that tiny amount, <laughs> which is exactly why he was attacked. Because he was trying to do this. I have a follow-on question on this. Before we go to Maya's question. Um, see, one of the reasons why US, I mean, sorry, one of the reasons why India keeps the rupee uh, depreciates gently is that it feels that its SME sector cannot handle an appreciating rupee. Like, for example, the 2007 crisis, when the P-notes came in so much that Indian rupee re appreciated and the SMEs were told by their banks that you need to invest in these new derivatives on which they lost even more money. You see what I'm saying? So there was a, a jugad that was done by well, who else? Who was the finance minister at that time? You'll know. So that case, even Supreme Court today doesn't want to take up how the public sector banks screwed their own customers. I'm just saying all this that how easy will it be for the Modi government to allow the rupee to appreciate? I think, uh, uh, Shriji, once all these sectors are going to bounce back to its real value, um, I think it's going to be pretty easy. I'll give an example of China. So the Chinese realized why they are on board on this de-dollarization process. The Chinese realized after four decades of slogging for the world, being the manufacturing factory of the world, they made only three trillions in profits, three trillions in reserves. Whereas United States printed about 13 trillions plus in just the last three years and distributed to Americans for free in the socialist freebies. So not Chinese have realized, it, not everybody, of course, uh, but you know, the Chinese have realized, which is why you see two days back, uh, Xi Jinping telling uh, that most of the consumption the Chinese have to do on, uh, have to do themselves. And a lot of exports I'm going to direct towards emerging economies and not the developed economies. He's been very clear. He used the word stabilize exports to the developed economies. So I believe that de-dollarization uh, will flip the valuation of the currencies in a way where even if Asia wants to export, I don't believe West will be able to 
afford Asian services. Thank you so much. Maya's question is back. Dr. Ankit, please talk more about Sanatan economics and how it could help not just India, but the world too. So this is, this is the second book that I'm working on, Sanatan economics model, where there are several elements in it. One of which you see uh, the, the family backed enterprising uh, is one of the factor. Second factor is the Mandir ecosystem where uh, you not just talk about the tourism that happens in the Mandir ecosystem, but you're also talking about the preservation of the life cycle. So each of the Bhagwans need a specific fruit, a specific food or a specific flower, right? Which is why all this biodiversity used to be preserved. I frankly believe that the world lost a lot of biodiversity because Indian mandirs were destroyed. So in terms of Sanatan economics, we need to bring the world uh, to this uh, wisdom of life cycles. And once the West understands this life cycle uh, formula, I believe it's going to be very easy for uh, even the Western economies to prosper. Because we, we as Indians believe in life cycles, which helps us you know, take care of not just the aged parents, but also the next generation, which is why uh, we are totally on an autopilot mode, not dependent on the state. Whereas you see the Western economies, uh, as I said, uh, the state has taken all the roles, the role of a husband, the role of a father, uh, uh, the role of the parents, the role of the kids. They are saying, we'll do the Medicaid for your aged parents. You can just leave the house. So since the state has filled in all these roles and interfered in the family structure, which is exactly why the Western economies are collapsing. So in the Sanatan economics model, since we come up with this uh, life cycle wisdom, uh, that is how the economics gets sustained till eternity. Um, by the way, a lot of the stuff that Dr. Shah is saying today has been echoed by uh, Sri Gurumurthy and also Professor R. Vaidyanathan. This is not new to our channel. Viewers, you 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 remember many of the initial talks that uh, Professor R. V. used to give on our channel. Anyway, I just want to keep going. Tim O'Neill wants to know, you would need to choose an adequate substitute like what? Ruble, Yuan? So the substitute is going to be the BRICS currency format. So if that format does not work or it has some disadvantages, the countries would all automatically shift to the bilateral currencies trade, like Russia and India trading in ruble and rupees, India and Sri Lanka trading in uh, rupees and the Sri Lankan rupee, right? So even if you know the uh, the uh, the BRICS format does not work, the countries are anyways going to shift to the national currencies bilateral trade. So de-dollarization is confirmed. There is no way it can be stopped. Next question from SV. Thank you, SV. After de-dollarization, what will it be its effect on private and public markets? Will all, Also, will the world GDP size reduce and purchasing power too goes with it? So I do not believe that the, uh, uh, the purchasing power is going to reduce because the gold as a commodity, I'm just giving one example of gold. Gold as a finite commodity has massive inflationary absorption capacity. So you will see uh, the interest rates in Asia and Gulf falling down to 2.5 to 4% something. And the West moving towards a high interest regime, which is why West will not be able to attract uh, any more of innovation or immigrant brains. Because once if a made in USA product is supposed to compete with a made in Asia product, uh, you need to uh, cut down the salaries to 60% something. So I believe that the GDP size of the West is certainly going to reduce, uh, but the purchasing power of the pegged currency is going to be a very stable for Asia and Gulf. Um, by the way, guys, in the last three or four months, the real estate in the United States in some places have dropped, has dropped by 30%, 30. Uh, fastest drop in real estate values uh, in the last few months, not all areas of United States. This is an uneven situation, but there are some areas where it has dropped by 30%. One can make the argument that throughout uh, uh, COVID, it was going up fine, but you have to know that when there is an up, there's also a down also. The down has been a lot sharper. That's my only point. Katie wants to know, Indian stock market view for 2030 manufacturing sector, expecting bull run for manufacturing sector? Yes. As I said, manufacturing and farming, logistics, enterprising, precious metals, these all are going to boom like crazy. 
so uh, you will see a lot of uh, a lot of um, you know western money pouring into india because one we already have the youngest working population because all these countries have destroyed their economy with uh, you know uh, trying to use the fertile years of women as a unit of labor which for temporary gdp which is exactly why the birth rates are falling and these countries are becoming aged so i believe these aging countries are going to pour all their investment and savings on the indian life cycle wisdom of sanatan economics economy so a lot of funds coming into india definitely can be expected what is the timeline for the de dollarization t101 wants to know guys i can't say names that are pseudonyms it's difficult to you know put a face behind a pseudonym so go ahead yeah so in the africa summit in august this year you are they are going to discuss the brics plus are going to discuss um, the currency peg currency format formula after which i believe uh, the pilot transactions will begin uh, i believe from mid 2024 you will see start seeing some stability in the brics transactions after all the experiments run and i believe it's going to be a truly democratic reserve currency because each and every participant nations are going to be having their currency in the basket with free entry and exit no one country bossing around no one country sanctioning the other country no one country uh, you know trying to weaponize the payment system etc etc now one of the question which i get is what about india china lse issue what about the conflicts between the brics participant nations so uh, my answer to them is none of the bilateral uh, conflicts can impact a multilateral format which is exactly why you see when poland talks about world war reparations from germany euro currency is not impacted right so none of the bilateral conflicts will affect a multilateral currency format so be rest assured this is not happening Girish Joyce wants to know: Are the recent large aircraft orders a means to do away with dollar reserves by Bharat before de-dollarization? Um, you can say in part yes, because these payments are going to be in dollar reserves. But I believe that uh, you know a, a lot of United. We are not sending United States to some other planet, right? <laughs> United States is still going to trade with all the countries in Asia and Gulf. Certainly, you know. Uh, it's not possible for the west to set up manufacturing and supply chains all of a sudden it's going to take about at least this decade to set up those supply chains and manufacturing so i believe uh, either the western countries are going to peg their currency or the asia and gulf are going to say we need payment in gold for all that we supply so either of the two i believe the west will peg its currency LinkedIn user wants to know indirectly is related to today's topic. What is the prospect for India's and BRICS in general exports and collaborations with the growing Alkebulan Pan African coalition? This would theoretically essentially shut out EU US cabal. But please comment on this possibility, not reality. Yeah. So Africa is going to be the new war zone. Everybody knows, which is why you are seeing that. Uh, they have started nationalizing their mines be it lithium mines be it gold mines be it silver mines because once the commodities are going i mean the currency is going to be pegged with commodities mines is exactly what all the countries are going to hunt for uh, so Ari uh, africa is certainly is going to be a war zone uh, among all the big powers and also the south american continent which is why you see a lot of chaos uh, in brazil chile and mexico and all that stuff because after all united states need some vassal countries to continue higher valuation for the us dollar so once with this ukraine conflict you will see uh, that the uk and eu currencies have dropped in terms of value their economy is being deindustrialized uh, that will help the us dollar to continue with some value in the pegged world sas wants to know from democracy to communism is the new world order ahead hmm. i mean i think so, what he's asking is are you going to go towards communism well the west the west certainly will move to it's already a communist country i mean in terms of socialist benefits if you see uh, the kind of uh, the doles which uh, the western countries does uh, and the kind of uh, family roles that it plays i believe it's partly communist already 
And now if they want to do a reset, which I am talking about, this currency reset, they will have to have a full control over money, which is why they will have to demonetize. And with this advent of the digital dollar, they will be able to control and manipulate the values. And this is how it's going to move forward. As long as Asia is concerned, particularly India, I don't believe uh, the, the physical currency notes are going anywhere. Um, because once the physical currency notes goes, it is it's a, it's a complete disappearance of human rights and the individual rights of the citizens. I don't think Asia will move towards it, but certainly the West is going to go down that path because it has to do a reset. Rahul Sharma wants to know, we still cannot trust the Indian stock market, which is controlled by a few. Hmm. So, uh, we know that the Indian stock market is very tiny compared to the unorganized sector that is in Indian economy, right? So, it hardly matters in terms of what manipulations play. But as long as the kind of uh, sabotage which we saw in the uh, Adani FPO issue, certainly the state will have to create, uh, you know, uh, arrangements to counter uh, this kind of sabotages uh, uh, in terms of regulations and in terms of creating those assets even in the West. So I, I don't understand ye rona dona, kisi na sajish kar li, aap bhi kar lo sajish. That is what I say. So either you buy Hindenburg, either you buy Hindenburg or you should be able to create an entity like Hindenburg in the West to counter themselves there only. Right. So if you are looking at a global player role, uh, these all things are going to happen. This kind of sabotages and this kind of attacks. So you have to prepare for it. Darshan wants to know what happens to Europe, whether US will backstab the EU. It already has. I believe this Ukraine conflict is a scripted de-dollarization conflict. So once the European Union is then their currencies are you know, reduced in terms of value, the economy is completely deindustrialized. That certainly helps the US dollar to maintain some kind of value. Now, these are going to be the vassal states going forward. They already were some of them, but many of them will now become the, especially in the western part of Europe, will become direct vassal states of the United States. So I believe it has backstepped. I mean, without any real war, if all the weapons are depleting for the European Union without even participating in a war, uh, I, you can clearly see what's going on. Sanat Kolhatkar wants to know, when do you expect China to return the American dollar bonds back to the USA? Hmm. So China and Japan both hold a lot many of the, uh, you know, uh, the dollar bonds, right? Now, one thing that, that there will come a stage of Western crisis where, where I believe that the first event is going to be mid-2023, where you see that the debt ceiling limit has the end date of mid-2023. The LIBOR rate has the end date for mid-2023. And digital dollar is also coming mid-2023. So I believe that the first crisis event uh, will begin mid-2023. Now, as long as uh, when the Chinese Communist Party drops the dollar bonds, uh, that, that is a complicated question because there will still be uh, a, a lot of give and take in terms of uh, the, the the exports that the Chinese economy has still has to do to the West. So I believe that this bonds will continue for at least this year. But when it happens, it's going to be a drastic one. Uh, and Bank of Japan, uh, since neither the, uh, the BRICS nations are giving any clues, nor the US economy is giving any clues whether they are going to counter de-dollarization or not, I believe the Bank of Japan is simply copy-pasting the policies of the Bank of China. Next question from Karthik VP. West has an advantage of being an innovation, innovation hub, smartphone, internet, etc. Can other countries compete and outsmart the West in innovation of new technologies? So you have to understand these are companies. This is not the state. So if, if, if the US as a government tries to stop these companies from moving or operating in Asia and Gulf for profits, I believe uh, the government will be in trouble not these companies. <laughs> these companies, uh, I mean, I believe USA is a corporation. It's not a country. 
So <laughs> these companies run the government, uh, which is exactly why you know, I say that they have dumped uh, the dollar. As soon as you know the gold became tier one in the Basel norms in 2019, it was very clear uh, that all the facilities are being made for de-dollarization process. So this company innovation will no more be possible because immigrant brains you cannot buy. The high interest regime ensures that innovation is no more possible in the West. So these companies are going to shift. Next question. Santosh wants to know, Dr. Ankit, how do you see US dollar inflation affecting US internally for the next five years? Yeah. So the United States economy has two options. Either it's a Zimbabwe-like inflation <laughs> or second is the reset, which is which is to come. There's no third option with the United States government. Entire inflation of uh, the, the COVID checks which were printed has been passed on to the public because they're not able to pass on to the rest of the world as countries have started shifting out their bilateral trade. So I believe that massive inflation will, will remain. And massive inflation means that high interest rate regime is going to be for a longer period. Because in order to solve inflation, you need to have an interest rate which is higher than the inflation rate, at least for a little period of time. If, if that does not happen, inflation is not going to be solved, which means that the United States is continuously going to have a higher inflation for a considerable period. Nirav Nagra wants to know, Dr. Ankit, how will de-dollarization and appreciation in rupee consequently help real estate in India, especially tier one cities like Mumbai, Delhi, etc.? So the temporary impact is going to be all those sectors which are uh, dependent on Western clients for revenue, especially the IT sector. They are going to face a big, big downturn, which means that this entire uh, foreign remittances, revenues, which the sectors were enjoying for this many years uh, is going to be doubtful, uh, which means that even the real estate sector where they would have parked their savings and investments, that will also take uh, a hit. But in the medium to long term, I don't see the Indian real estate facing any big problem. Um, let's make this the last question because uh, we are running up to one hour. Uh, Karan N wants to know, Dr. Ankit, sir, my question is, will U.S. shift to crypto technology in the years ahead? So, uh, Im immediately after 2008 crisis, it is not a coincidence from 2009, United States started pushing Bitcoin officially. Um, it's, it was not a coincidence. So, U.S. was looking for a backdoor entry for the U.S. dollar after de-dollarization with this private cryptos. But now since the countries of the world uh, have banned uh, this private cryptos as a legal tender of money usage, the United States has rolled back its decision and now it wants to uh, uh, finish off the legal tender of money usage of the private cryptos. So uh, I don't believe that particular usage will be allowed anywhere uh, because you have to understand how central banks were created. Central banks were basically created because Politicians wanted to do socialist freebies for vote banks and companies wanted to, uh, you know, uh, get more su supply of money printed so that when they pay the salary, the purchasing power of that money goes down. So say tomorrow, if I am uh, giving 20,000 salary and suddenly I make it 15,000, you are going to know as an employee that your salary went down. So the central bank was particularly created by corporates and the government so that you know they make more they print more um, and the purchasing power comes down and and as an employee you never come to know that you are getting lesser salary so central banks are never going anywhere because that's the sovereign right of handling and regulating the legal tender of money thank you very much dr ankit shah and viewers you may want to watch this video more than once there's a lot of information that has been shared by dr shah i'm hoping that this is the first of many such hangouts because this is a rapidly moving space not everybody has tried to connect the dots quite as well as dr ankit shah has done again it's not to say that he's going to be proved right or wrong these are not easy things these are not things that are going to you know do exactly as per a script a lot of people tugging in a lot of directions but 
certainly an eye opener as far as i'm concerned for our audiences thank you very much dr shah and we are hoping that you'll come back and grace our channel again very soon namaskar sure sir namaskar